Thank you. We are delighted to have our mother in our midst this evening. Let's put our hands together for Mama Roseman. Thank you, Mommy, for being in the house. Thank you. We thank God for the presence of our chairman again. Let's appreciate the apostle. Let's put our hands together for our vice chairman. Wonderful delivery this morning. Let's appreciate our international coordinator, Pastor Forsen, for all the organizational works that he's doing for us. Thank you all, great men and women. Pastor Isaac, we thank God for your life, for taking charge of the service. We are very sorry again for the situation of the light. It's something that is um, beyond our control at this point.
put your hands together as we receive our international coordinator, the Reverend Emmanuel Forson. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a shout, somebody. Come on screen. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, Bethesda is a blessing. Or oh, say it like they want to hear you. Hallelujah. Bethesda is a place where your miracles happen. And I want to tell you that you will not go back without your miracle. Amen. I want to thank God for our lives of our father and mother, Mama Pastor Eastwood and Mama Rosemont. Thank you so much. We are grateful. We are proud sons and daughters of yours because of the love that you have given unto us over the years. And we are grateful to be of service to the ministry. We honor our chairman, uh, Apostle Daniel Asiedu, and our former chairman, Reverend Clement Ancheba, Apostle Clement Ancheba. Thank you so much, Mom and Dad. God bless you. Tonight, I have an assignment, and the assignment is to do a roll call of our churches and basically bring to us the status of Fountain Gate Chapel as it stands currently. It's, it's a singular privilege to be able to go through this exercise for us because sometimes we don't really appreciate what we have become over the years and so we are grateful to our daddy for giving us this opportunity to present ourselves and let us know not just us here but also all those viewing us online to know the status of the church and the strength of the church both here and in all the regions and overseas and so I'm going to mention the names of the churches where they are located, the name of the pastor in charge, and thereafter, all the I'm going to do it region by region. And having said that, may I introduce to you that Fountain Gate Chapel doesn't follow the political regions of our nation. We have divided our nation into regions by proximity for supervision, for effectiveness of supervision. And so we have eight regions in Ghana, and I'm going to use those eight regions to introduce the churches. I will start off from where we are, and we are in Desert Pastures, Bogatanga, and the head pastor and the senior pastorate, Reverend Eastwood, Mama Rosemont, Anaba. Let's honor them greatly. Oh, that clap is small. <laughs> you could add a shout, you could even stand. Come on, this is our birthplace. This is our birthplace. This is our birthplace. Everything I'm going to say started here. You can do better than that. Come on, give it a shout. Pastors, let me see you here. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, mom and dad. We are grateful. Everything else I will say is an offshoot of what has happened here. Amen. We have Agape Pastures here in Bogatanga with Pastor Emmanuel Akoizie. And then we have Power Pastures also here in Bogatanga with Pastor Samuel Ali Wepia. And we also have Wisdom Pastures here in Bogatanga with Pastor Prince Jacobs. Then we have Favored Pastures in Dalungu. And we have Revival Pastures in Yikini. We have in Yikini led by Robert Abuirinya. And then we have Overcomers Pastures at Yorogo with Ali Michael Ataba. Then we have Salvation Pastures Yorogo with Dominic Abowine. We have Green Pastures. Bolga um, Gabibo with Eric Nyambrigiga. Permit me for crucifying that name. Favored Pastures, Bazengo with Pastor Gilbert. And we have Shiloh Pastures also in Sirigu with Pastor Jude. We have Desert River Pastures in Sirigu with Pastor Barnabas. We have Dominion Pastures in Zoko with Pastor Joseph. And then we have Faith, Faith Pastures in Balungu with Pastor Aduku Moses. We have Heavenly Pastures with Bari, Heavenly Pastures at Bari Pelong.
at Barry Pelong with Pastor Jacob Tibamba. Then we have Miraculous Pastures in Bui with Pastor Peter Bakeme. We have Light Pastures in Bungu with Pastor Noah Solomon. And then we have Faith Pastures, Tulu, with Pastor Emmanuel Soat. Then we have Liberation Pastures in Wale Wale with Pastor Samson Maulolo. We have Green Pastures in Winkongo with Reverend Ademba John. We have Philadelphia Pastures in Wulugu with Pastor Samuel Odrago. We have Eden Pastures, Yale, with Pastor Ezekiel Sampana. We have Mountain Pastures, Yinduri, with Pastor Michael Tamponab. We have Celebration Pastures in Zaleroi, with Pastor John Zong. We have Miraculous Pastures in Palugu, with Pastor Charles Ananga. We have Oasis Pastures in Shega, with uh, Pastor Morgan. Then we have Praise Pastures, Tongo, with Pastor Robert Ziyaba. We have Glorious Pastures at Takwa Site with Pastor Amos J. Bafo. We have Canaan Pastures in Bani with Pastor Emmanuel Nienzun. We have Word Pastures, Shega, with Pastor Yabinga Puke Christopher. And then we have Liberation Pastures in Kupiga, Kupeliga with Pastor John Tebel. We have Valley Pastures in Karaminga with Pastor Paul Amadou. We have Royal Pastures, Ducey, with Pastor Nicholas Dock. Good News Pastures, Gorogo, with Edward Till. Rock Pastures, Rock of Ages Pastures, in Yamerega, with Matthew Yindog. Then we have Power Pastures, in Gambia, with Pastor Philip Yin. We have Glorious Pastures, in Bepela with Pastor Moses. We have Solution Pastures, Zanlerugu, with Pastor Baba Michael Abongo, the district coordinator in the area. We have Blessed Pastures in Congo. We have Reviving Pastures in Dasabigolo with Pastor George Ditto. And we have Dominion Pastures in Nangodi with Pastor Marcus Pebel. We have Love Pastures, Guwangi with Ernest Bayaha, and we have Elevation Pastures in Ghani Asonje with Mahama Justice Alale, and then we have Divine Pastures at Pelungu with William Noah. Also in Boga East, where we are, we have Dominion Pastures in Damo Tendong with Pastor John Anaba. I thought I would hear a shout there. In Damal Tengdong. Hallelujah. And then we have Love Pastures in Patia with Lambert Kwame. Miracle Pastures in Mehibong with Samuel Nao. And then Dominion Pastures, Tongo Biong with Joseph and Nabire. We have Salvation Pastures in Sakoti with Thomas Yin. We have Hope Pastures, Zwarungu Moshi, with Nicholas Asampana. We have Grace Pastures, in Bongo Biong, again, with Peter Aboya. We have Rock Pastures, in Biong, Tanko, with Jonah, Pastor Jonah. And then we have Omega Pastures, in Dachio, with Pastor Rebecca Nsoboy. Then we have Fruit Pastures, in Sapporo, Bongo, with Pastor Michael Abodno Zoya. We have Zion Pastures in Adaboya with Michael Akolbire. And we have Sanctuary Pastures in Bongo Bio, Bongori Bongo, with Daniel Atenga. And we have Silom Pastures with Bongo Abuntua with Solomon Hamidu. Mission Pastures, Zuarungu, with Pastor Abongo Vincent. We have City Pastures, Zuarungu Market, with Pastor Aduko Elisha. We have Grace Pastures in Yamsuk, with Pastor Wilson 
at Zaringo, and then we have Conquest Pastures in Bari, Tongo, with Pastor Ananga Thompson. Then Victory Pastures at Zuarungu Asongi with I, Pastor Ayang, Ayato Azuma Matthew. And then we have Zion Pastures at Zuarungu Zonu Zori with Pastor Richard Ayinganoya. Shining Pastures at Yang Zori with Pastor Martin, and then we have self Satisfaction Pastures at Tindongo with Pastor Bismarck, and then Anointed Pastures at Zari Zori with Pastor Clement Bakime, and also Covenant Pastures with, at uh, Apuongo Bongo with Pastor Albert Alurugo. So 68 pastures in the Boga East region. 68 pastures in the Boga East region. Can I ask all the pastors in the Boga East region to please stand? Quickly. Quickly. You know yourself. You know where you are. All the pastors in Boga East region, please stand. All of you. All of you. All of you. And our regional coordinator is Reverend Samuel Ali Wepia who has coordinated all the churches in the region very effectively. Come on, church, let's give them a clap. And can I ask the church members in Boga East, every one of you in the churches that I have mentioned, please stand. Every one of you in the churches I've mentioned in Boga East, please stand. All the churches around here, the Melos churches, all the churches, all those areas, please stand. Church, let's acknowledge them quickly. Thank you. Please be seated. Next, we have Borga West. In Borga West, we have watered pastures, prosperity pastures, uh, Shakina pastures. All these are in Boku. We have super green pastures, dunamis pastures. And then in Chuchuliga and Chana, we have Dunamis pastures and Agape pastures. And then in Navrongo, we have mountain pastures, refreshing pastures in Boku. And then we also have in Zibila, grace pastures. And then we have in Garu, divine pastures. And then we have in Pusinga, Makariot pastures. And several other pastures, 22 pastures in all in the Boga East region. Can I ask all the pastors in Boga East region to please stand? All the pastors in the Boga West region, please stand. Boga West, please, Boga West. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And our regional coordinator is Pastor Ben Anamo, and he's serving us well. God bless you, you may take your seats. And the churches there, God bless you. Next, I have the BA East region. The BA East region has 24 churches. Sorry, the BA East region has 13 churches. 13 churches. Principal among them is um, Praise Pastures in Techiman, Prayer Pastures in Kintampo, and then Amazing Grace Pastures also in Techiman. Can we please stand all the pastors in the BA East region? Please stand. For want of time, I will not mention all the churches, but we have 13 strong churches. Wonder pastures in, Wen in uh, Wenchi. God bless you. Thank you so much. Then we have Bro Ahafu West. That's BA West. And BA West, we have faith pastures in, um, in Sunyani and a number of pastures around them, his presence pastures in Kenya. See, can I ask all the pastures in BA West, please stand? The original coordinator is Pastor Samson Lambon. Is that all? You are scattered. All right, all right, all right. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then we come to the middle belt. In the middle belt, we have 21 pastures. 
Middle Belt comprises Kumasi, part of Eastern Region, part of Central Region together. And all together, there are 21 pastures. Our regional coordinator is Reverend Dr. Felix Ahosu. And that is the region in which I reside and serve myself in refreshing pastures in Kumasi, in Adiembra. And so please, Middle Belts, can we please stand? Middle Belt pastors, please stand. Please stand, please stand, please stand. Pastor Ojo, Dominion pastures, Tanosu, Pastor Foro in Jubilee pastures. Thank you, Pastor Chris in Obuase, thank you so much. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And Pastor Sami at Boho Sasa, God bless you. You may be seated, thank you. After the middle belt, I want to go to the coastal belt. Coastal belt refers to Accra, greater Accra part of western region, part of eastern region and Volta region. And the coastal belt comprises of 45 churches. 45 churches. Principal among them, of course, is the Gate Pastures at Ofanko in Accra, where our former chairman, Apostle Clement Ancheba, is the head. Can we have all the pastors in the greater, sorry, in the coastal belt to please stand? Coastal, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Our vice chairman is in the region in Ho. We have IP members, Pastor Isaac at Sakumono, he's there. Pastor Patrick at Adenta, thank you. Pastor Vicentia in Hohoi, all of you, God bless you. Let's honor them, let's honor them, let's honor them. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Then we have the Northern Belt, which is northern region and part of Savannah and part of um, Upper West, the lower part, all together in the Northern Belt. And in the Northern Belt, we have 47 pastures. 47 pastures. Key among them is Liberation Pastures in Tamale with uh, Pastor Jim Adombila. And then we have Scripture Pastures with Professor Sadito and Philadelphia Pastures with Pastor uh, Adam Foster and then several other pastures in the region. Northern Belt, can we please stand? Northern Belt, can we please stand? Our regional coordinator is Dr. Professor Chris Boha, very effective regional coordinator prof. Thank you so much for the work you do in the Northern region. God bless you. You may be seated. Then we have Upper Western Belt. And the Upper Western Belt has 77 pastures. They are the biggest. 77 pastures. All stemming out of sanctuary pastures in Wa with Pastor Ben Ancheba, where Pastor Clement Ancheba started. Can we please stand, all of us in the Upper Western Belt, please stand. Upper Western Belt, please stand. Upper Western Belt, please stand. Thank you. Let's honor them. Let's honor these great men. Come on, honor them, honor them, honor them, honor them. Amen. And the Upper Western Belt is the fastest growing among us because as we speak, just before the convention, they introduced two other pastures which have not yet been captured. And so God bless you so much. Thank you for the work that you are doing. I would like to end with our overseas churches. We have 18 churches overseas. And if you would permit me, I would like to mention these ones as I come to an end. So we have liberation pastures in Copenhagen, Denmark, where Pastor Charles Frimpong is the head pastor. Then we have faith pastures in Halo, Essex, UK, where Joseph Bediako is the head pastor. We have word pastures in Thornton Heath in Surrey, UK, where Pastor Nathaniel Osea Sante is the head pastor. And then we have live pastures in Tottenham, London, where Pastor Grant Bumo is the head pastor. We have Grace Pastures, Edmonton, Canada, where Pastor Florence Obin is the head pastor. And then we have Mount Zion Pastures at Dumfries, Virginia, USA, where Pastor Alex Fridua Ajiman is the head pastor. We have Livingstone Pastures 
in Irving, New Jersey, where Pastor Comfort Akanko Akeb is the head pastor. They also have Destiny Changes Pastures in Tyler, Texas, USA, where Pastor Patrice Lumumba Anab is the head pastor. And we have Desert Pastures in Indianapolis, USA, where Pastor Edu Ofe, Eric Edu Ofe is the head pastor. We have Spirit Pastures in Cincinnati, Ohio, USA, where Pastor Frederick Nkrumah is the head pastor. We have renowned pastures in Richmond, Virginia, USA, where Pastor Michael Ofori is the head pastor. And we have Kingdom Pastures in Maryland, USA, where Bernard Ore Dukumi is the head pastor. We have Grace Pastures, Restoration Pastures, Love Pastures in Ouagadougou. All right, just across the border. And then we have Life Pastures, and also in Ouagadougou, Holy Ghost Pastures, and then Bethel Pastures, also in Ouagadougou. The, six, the last six are in Ouagadougou. Thank you so much. So that is the spread. All together, 335 churches. 325 churches. Let's give a clap offering to God for this great thing that he has done for Fountain Gate Chapel. And by the way, we are still growing. I encourage all our pastors to be mission-minded that as we go back, focus on your pastures, but spread the word. Open a branch in a nearby place. Identify the gifts in the church. Develop them and send them out. That's the way we were developed. And we want to honor Pastor Michael Aikade for standing firm here as the executive pastor. And when we need a push, we can come to him. We get the mind of our father straight from him. Because sometimes, um, if you come near the fire and you feel the, the, the heat, you want to just cool in that warm breeze, you will get what you need. Because the father will download to him and then you can receive. Pastor Mike, we are grateful for all the support. I know all these pastors call you. That's how come I'm honoring you. God bless you so much and thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm grateful. Thank you so much. The book.
abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me Lord you never
Amen. You may be seated. Amen, amen, amen. I think those of you, those of you that are in the room, you are suffering, but those of us who are online suffered more. I was wondering, is it my phone that was having a problem? Because I'm following the thing, it will cut, come back, cut, come back. So, there's a lot of inconvenience online and in person, but um, we, we will have to brave the weather and get through it. And um, what, whatever it is, it's better than two weeks ago when the internet and everything was just down. I want to encourage, um, I want to encourage um, those of you that are online to invite other people to join you. Tell them um, they should come on. We hope it won't break again. But even if it breaks, they should come on and it breaks, they come on again. It breaks, they come on again. Just fight until you get what you want. Okay? Fight until you get what you want. And then we believe that we'll have a good time. How many of you thank God for Pastor Zenabu? Thank you so, so much. God bless you mightily. Thank you so, so much. And um, international coordinator and Pastor Mike and everybody. And we thank God our chairman is in the house. Apostle Daniel Siedu is in the house. The Reverend Clement Ancheva is in the house. Mama Rosemond is in the house. All of us, just, we, we want to thank God. And I'm so excited to see all the, the pastors of the Fountain Gate Chapel from the various places and they are they are here and um, they are here with their people. So you see the way the room is packed. When I say we want to build, let's say, a 20,000 seater auditorium in Balungu, somebody may think I'm a madman, but we must get there. We must get there. And God willing, God willing, 2025, we will dig the foundation for that auditorium. 2025. We are gradually going to move from here. We, we, we can't stay here. The, the, the place is overcrowded. You don't see it. Even this power problem is telling you you can't stay here forever. And you can see there's no parking. And your cars have not arrived yet. No, and that because in this church, very soon, it will be a taboo for a man and a wife to, to share one car. It will be a crime. And it will be a taboo to have two cars without a spare. Yesterday, I was looking for a friend and then I said, where is the friend? They said, he took his car for repairs, so he didn't have another one. That is not a blessing. You can take even three to repairs. One will still be left. <laughs> Yesterday, can you imagine, if me and mommy were using one car, and Timothy took my key away, what would have happened? Service is finished. Tell your wife, if she's sitting by you, we cannot share the same car. Tell the woman, the car we have is yours. Mine must follow. Eh? Blessing, 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 blessing. When you read the Old Testament, anytime it says God bless somebody. When the Old Testament, when it says God bless somebody. It had nothing to do with passing an exam. No, no, no. God, God bless somebody. In the Old Testament, it was, it was not passing exam. Who called passing exam blessing in the Old Testament? Passing exam. Traveling abroad. abroad. Hmm? Casting out devil. In the Old Testament, when they say you were blessed, it meant only one thing. It means you are something people can see. They look at your body, they can tell you are blessed. They look at your house, they can tell you are blessed. They look at your car, they, they can tell you are blessed. They look at your children, they can tell you are blessed. But 
if you are, your children are sitting down to Kwashiako, the stomach has distended and then flame is running down the nose. That, that one is your blessing. No matter how prayerful you are, they won't say you are blessed. Blessing means that God has made you look good. God has favored you. God has changed your environment. You are flourishing. I know there are spiritual blessings. I'm not talking about that is why I talked about Old Testament. There are spiritual blessings. And I know some of you have been saying you, you prefer the spiritual blessings to the physical blessings. Me, I want both. I want both of them. I want both. I don't want one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I told a friend of mine, I said, I'm going to use, um, I'll finish Giviat Ha Elohim um, next year. He said, Pastor Isu, that is too far. How can you spend all that long, long time building that? Thing? He said, you have to finish it this year. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Makes me lie down in green pastures. Leads me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup ran it over. Now, before I go on with the preaching, I want to say that on Sunday, it's not possible to hold one service. It's impossible. So on Sunday, we are going to have the fire assembly, and it will be a special fire assembly from 7 to 9. I'll be the preacher, and they will interpret from English to Frafra. So, on Sunday, the first assembly, 7 to 9, is the fire assembly and is for the vernacular Frafra speaking people. And this year, you know, last year we did it, but I was in the preacher. This year I'll be preaching myself. This year I'll be preaching myself. I know some of you have been wondering, um, so, so somebody asked me, what about um, set time assembly? I will do the set time assembly. The meeting is 7 to 9, Abby. So, while they are doing it here, I will be at the set time assembly. Then at about 7.45, thereabout, or 7.50. Thank God this is not a crowd. There's no traffic. If I leave my house at 7.50, or even at the 8, I will come and hit the service, and I will preach, and then I will close. So, um, it is still possible. So, we are going to do that. I'm going to do three services. I'm going to do the set time. Then I'm going to do the, the fire assembly, 7 to 9. And then from 9 to 12, we will have the rain assembly. And that will be the English assembly. Okay? So on Sunday, that is the plan. Everybody take note of it. But I want to speak to the Frafra speaking people myself. So um, I'll be speaking in both assemblies, the rain and the, the fire and the rain. I'll do both. I'll speak in both of them. Okay, now the Lord has blessed us, the Lord has been gracious to us. And um, when He says that, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Then He said, For thou art with me, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Let me tell you this, people. I know people normally say that when you are reading the Bible, don't interpret everything literal. Don't interpret everything literal. I'm not a theologian. I'm not, I'm not, I don't pretend to know hermeneutics or whatever, hermeneutics, interpretation of the Bible. I've never been to Bible school before. Not even for one day. Okay. But me, I like the Bible literal. If the Bible said they cross Red Sea, me, I just said they cross Red Sea. Zacchaeus climbed the tree. I said, Zacchaeus climbed the tree. That's all. Cup running over means cup running over. 
it has no interpretation. It means the believer must have a cup. And the cup shouldn't be half full. It should run over. You should have surplus. You must be so blessed that everybody around you is happy. I told, I told my wife a few weeks ago or months ago, I said, Pearl, you and me, we will have to help all our brothers and sisters. Every one of them, our brothers and sisters, every one of them must have a house. We have houses we are living in. Let's help the rest of them. Everybody should have a house. None of our brothers and sisters must die in a rented house. I declare to somebody in the name of Jesus, may you not die in a rented house. If you have finished building one house or two for yourself, help your brothers and sisters to also build houses. You know what? There is a problem we have if we don't become generous and start helping one another. Some of our family members are going to be very miserable. Last Sunday, when Saturday, no, last Wednesday, when we went to the Giviat Ar Elohim, you saw my brothers and sisters. You saw them. I brought them out for you to see them. As I speak to you, me, mommy and I have provided houses for three of my sisters. And then we are in the process of building a house for one of them. You understand what I'm saying? That makes it four. Okay, that makes it for the main. We are okay, but our sisters, because of the culture in the northern part of Ghana, this is one of them. This is one of them. Their house in a village, and the village is far away. And this is the house we built for the, the last of my sisters. No, not the last. She's not the last. She looks like the last because she's smaller than Vero. Vero is very tall, but she lives in a certain place. I, I, Alex, Babuoninyalaya. What is the name of the place? Alex is not here. He's the family museum keeper. <laughs> but you know, and when we went to build this house for my sister, there was no borehole or water in the village. So, we had to sink a borehole for her. When we finished, then the village people came and said, you have given your sister a boho. What about we, the people in the village? What will we do? We to come and do boho. And we went and did a boho for them. So we provided a boho for that village also. Now, some of you may think, oh, what has that got to do with evangelism? Pastor Mike and co went there through this boho. They preached to the people. They evangelized to them. People gave their life to Christ. Pastor Mike went and dedicated the boho to the, to the Lord in the place. I'm praying, people, may God bless you so much. The Bible said, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. May God make you that person in your family that God will use to touch them one by one to, to bless them so that what your father could not do, you would do it on his behalf. So you see, for me and mommy, it was not a matter of going to build Giviat Ha Elohim and saying we are honoring our father. No. The responsibilities our fathers left on earth. If they left a wife, we took over. If they left children, we took over. And we said what our fathers would have done for these wives or they left behind and for the children they left behind, we would take care of them. So you know what? By the grace of God, mommy is doing it on her side. I'm doing it on my side. Together, we are doing it on my side and her side. And we are making sure that everything that concerns our brothers and our sisters, we take care of it. Listen to me. When you have the right heart, God will put substance in your hand to take care of the responsibility. Oh, as for mommy, as for mommy, this woman is just an angel. No, no, no. I show her checks. She writes most of them herself. Pearl, Vero's house. Vero is my younger sister. Vero's house. Gabriel needs money to continue. She said, no problem. You know, people, I'm not trying to say 
something I shouldn't say. Because sometimes when you don't know, you don't know. So some of you, you think we are just building church buildings. Har Kadosh, Giviat I Elohim. But people around us are suffering. No. When we are coming to do a convention, I call my brothers and sisters one by one. I say we are going to have a convention. You take this one, prepare for the convention. You take this one, prepare for the convention. I know people will come and live with you. You take this, you take this, you take this. Listen, my mind is on all that detail. The reason we do it is not only because of our heart, but God has blessed us enough to do it. Any hand that is lifted right now, may your hands never be empty. Because an empty hand can make you look very wicked. I know some people don't believe. You know, that there are pastors in the Upper East region who have a problem with me because I preach prosperity. Listen, I am not just a prosperity preacher. I am a prosperity practitioner. No, 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 people. And, and I'm not ashamed about it at all. It is my wish and my desire that everybody in the Upper East region will prosper. Oh, you are clapping like you love poverty. Those of you clapping, poverty has left you. Poverty has left you. Listen. You saw, you saw my brothers and sisters. One of them, my father married her away around the age of 40, 14 to 15. The girl was gone. She was married already. She never enjoyed what they call childhood. She started producing children. Then now that she's grown, she thinks like a child. My father couldn't help her. I'm the second born. My sister who was before me is late. So now I'm all of them. I'm like their father. And their children are like my grandchildren. Listen to me. I'll be very irresponsible to be walking about, go to Germany and come back, go to America, come back, sit in all these nice, nice airplanes, enter all these beautiful lounges, sit down and eat and uh, drink pomegranate um, juice and apple juice and, and all that. And you have a sister who is in that village where she is. <laughs> and she, she, when she has to defecate, she must go to the bush. So you see that her house in the village? There's WC there. The water is running. Am I talking to somebody at all? Listen, I'm prophesying your future. I'm praying that God will give you grace to do things for your brothers, your sisters. Running over means you have had enough for yourself and you are not taking care of other people. May God make you a good man. May God make you a good woman. May God make you, you, you know, I, you will notice that in this particular convention or convocation, I'm not giving you those three points, four points, five points. I told mommy, I said, Pearl, I don't feel like doing it. I just feel like if I enter the building, anything I want to say, I should just tell them. I prophesy over somebody's life. And watch this. This is what they call prophecy. When you speak and the land changes. When you speak and the words are targeted at people. And by tomorrow morning, they don't know what happened. But their lives change. Their finances change. Come on, scream like your voice is young. You know, I've been saying, <laughs> there's something I say every day that because human beings are evil, because human beings are evil, they think everybody's like them. I remember when we were going to build Gideon had Elohim. One person made a comment and said, Ah, it's their business they are coming to do. That's why they are getting the land. I told mommy, I said, Pearl, people think everybody's like them. Gideon had Elohim is not a business. God is my witness. My wife is standing here. 
I've never told her one day that that thing is a business and we are going to get money. Who goes to do that investment there for money? My joy in my old age will be to go to that multinom, sit on the well, that upstairs, what did some, somebody call it? And terrace. And I will watch children going in and out of that library. And I have a storehouse and food. And I can come and I can give some of the children clothing to wear. Give some of them food. Pick up sandals. You see, when I came into this building, I stood here straight away i went there to greet my little friend that is my heart by the grace of god that is the kind of person god has made me I, i'm not that kind of macho human being who doesn't feel for people and then you so i told you i said it's not a business we go to doxa since we formed doxa years ago mommy has never benefited one city from doxa i have and when i say one i mean one this woman has never benefited one city from Doxa. As for me, it is zero, 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 zero. And I can tell you by the grace of God, I will never go there to go and look for anything. But when we go there, what makes us happy is that we go and we see some, are, some people are cutting the grass, some are at the reception, some are in the restaurant. They are working. I am a preacher against rural urban migration. And for years, I've been saying, I want governments that will help us to stop this tide of the unwarranted rural urban migration. People that don't have to leave Boga to go to Kumasi and go and do Kayaye to survive. People don't have to run from the Upper East region and go to Ashanti and go to Bia to go and farm in order to survive. Because there are farmlands here and there are opportunities here that the people can use to enhance their lives. So now, you can't preach all these things without making a contribution. So when I go to Doxa and I see people are working, and I go to Giviat Ha Elohim, and I see people are working, and I go to the school, and I see people are teaching. During COVID-19, COVID hit the whole of Ghana and the world. People laid off their workers. I call the financial experts in Ghana, and I ask them, what should I do with the workers of the Desert Passage International School? They say, Rev, you have to lay them off. Because if money is not coming in, how can you take care of them? So they have to go home. Mommy and I went to talk. And we concluded. These teachers, a lot of them have been insulted because of us. People told them, why do you leave GES and go and follow these charlatans? You know, many times they call us charlatans because they don't even know us. For you to be calling somebody a charlatan, when you don't know the person, you are bearing false witness against your neighbor you, because you think the way you are evil, that person too is like that. You are just mis, 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 misunderstanding their motives for the things they do. So they call these people charlatans. You know, you stop your work and you are following all these pastors and you go and you are teaching in the Desert Pastors International School and you are not going to get anything from it and then these people are going to disappoint you one day. Then the biggest agent of disappointment called COVID-19 hit. And I told mommy, I said, Pearl, we are not laying off one teacher. We are carrying all these teachers, all these workers, all these cleaners, we are carrying them until COVID is over. And we took hold of them and for nine months nine months finally when we calculated how much we spent to look after them during that period it was 630,000 Ghana cities we used to take care of the people in the COVID no government assistance no assistance from anybody we we're just sitting down anything and during COVID-19 you should see me and mommy you will laugh somebody will send us Momo 500 we had a notebook. Somebody sent us 500. Mommy will write it down and we'll put it away. 700, she'll write it down, we'll put it down. 800, we'll write it, put it down. So, Mommy was the one recording the figures. We wrote down everything carefully. And then at the end of the day, we are putting it in the ministry. The ministry is taking care of the people. You know, people, 
for those of us who come from the upper east region and i'm very sorry that the rest of us who come from the other regions you'll be like is everything in this man's brain upper east region you are correct my blood group is not blood group a or b or o my blood group is u e r upper east region not not because of tribalism but it is my passion it's my passion i dream it i eat it i want to see 10 years from now you look at this region you cannot recognize it and for any of you and for any of you who is not envious jesus told the people the story about the good samaritan and said go and do likewise anybody who is not envious of my passion for this region and you are supporting me and you are praying for me and you are helping me i see the same anointing in your region i see the same anointing in the beer i see the same anointing in the northern region the same in the upper west region the same in ashanti the same in western the same in east the same in central the same in america the same in britain anybody that can shout the power of god is upon you. So, when I see all these people working, hmm, the other day I was driving out of the church and I saw a, cha- a jata, the cleaner of this church. No, not, not, not I was going. I looked to, through the CCTV camera and I saw they were cleaning. My heart was happy. I said, look, we have also provided employment. You see, those of you insult pastors by heart. Sometimes just have a little conscience. Eh? Just have a little conscience. Compare your inaction in life with the passion of these pastors. And if you have a little conscience, you will stop talking. You will stop. And I'm not talking about just me. I'm not just talking about me pastors in ghana i can count them one two three four you go and meet reverend steve mensa and the only thing steve mensa is talking about is disability village where they've gone for thousands of acres of land and you ask him steve what are you going to do on this land he says i'm going to build a village for people with disability people that are physically disadvantaged in so many ways so the blind and the lame and the crippled and the deaf they will be there and we will look after them that's a pastor thinking this way i can tell you there is some proper way of thinking only pastors think like that there's some kind of thinking for humanity only pastors think like that and and, and you you know what people nothing will stop us nothing church people church people believers born again tongue talking who go to church and you you give tithe you give offerings you give seed i want to tell you you are giving your money to the most faithful stewards in ghana and africa you have given your money to the most faithful stewards now if you say i'm not telling the truth look at what by the grace of god I have produced with one CD, 10 CDs, 5 CDs. Look at what by the grace of God me and mommy have produced. You can see it all over the place. Employment, education. I took Dr. Menso table to, to the village. I showed him the village house. We went into the lounge. When we went into the lounge, I showed him the decoration inside the building. I told him, Doc, the one who did this whole decoration, this beautiful decoration, where you would think you are in the lounge of the Emirates, so beautiful. I said, he's one of the orphans mommy adopted years ago and looked after this boy. This boy finished school and he's called brother Jonas and that is the work Jonas can do. Listen, we can show you engineers and doctors and lawyers, people that we took out of nowhere, adopted them as our own children and through Health Foundation, we looked after them. They became the kind of men they were. I'm not talking about just me. You know, I 
can't go into all the examples but there's enough example in this house look at what dr menso Tabula has done first private owned university in ghana that is what the man did do you know what it means to take care of a crutch Ajinasari will go for Perez University. And I can tell you, all these people, there is nothing they are looking for. They just want fulfillment. My cup ran it over. I see somebody. You are going into more than enough. You will take care of your brothers and sisters. You will be like Joseph with more than enough food for yourself. And you will call your brothers and your sisters to come from Canaan and they should come to the land of Egypt because there is food in the land of Egypt. I see your house. I see your brothers and sisters are coming and your parents are coming. I see you change your region. I see you change your nation. I see you change the world you come from. If you can clap your hands and scream, the power of God is on you. Ah. 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 Yeah. this is my village the first person to think like that in this village is not a doctor he's not a lawyer he's not an engineer he's not a businessman he's a pastor the one you people call liars this is the work of a liar and if this is what liars can do then lying is good look at the way you are clapping as if you are a carpenter whose tools are spot anybody clapping Oh, this picture is nice this picture is nice this picture is nice those of you who like viral things this is a picture for viral wow keep this picture for me if I get this picture I would like to frame it as if we plan to throw the fingers and it wasn't a portion we are just talking now so you can see two people Whose hearts are together? Two people who are looking. Listen, hey, and I can tell you, this kind of friendship you are seeing, I can tell you from my experience of 64 years, only pastors become friends to this extent. Only pastors, unbelievers, unbelievers can become friends mentally and physically, but the third department. They cannot become friends. And the third department is spirit. It was only pastors who can become friends mentally, physically, and spiritually. And that's what you are seeing. That's what you are seeing. Whoa, I like this picture. I like this picture. That means our spirits were rising together. I've not started preaching. I haven't started my notes. <laughs> you cannot be looking for sermons when you are a sermon can I tell you that many people who are looking for sermons it is because they themselves are not a sermon that is why Jesus Christ did not struggle to get the word because he himself was the word keep that for another day keep that for another day when you preach things you have not experienced you look for many verses but when you preach things you have experienced one verse is enough his cup runs over my cup ran it over oh this picture is nice i now remember why this picture i was showing him where our family house was my father's family house when my father passed mommy and i went and broke down the house 
the part of it which was mud, and we changed everything to Sankrit. We did everything nice, put the ball holes there, put all the WCs there, put everything beautiful in the place, and then I told my stepmom, and then the rest of them, I said, now this is your house, just keep this nice one. And I told all my brothers and sisters, I said, nobody should bring a bag of cement here. It is the job for just me and mommy to finish. I don't want anybody to bring a bag of cement here so that one day you say it's your house. I said this. I'm doing it for Nyoknab, the original Nyoknab soldier man, another soldier. And when we finish, me and mommy are finished. It is Oman's house. So when we finish, the nicest part of the house, I gave it to my brother Alex. I said, Alex, you are the landlord. Take this. I said, me and my brother Prosper and Ima, we will share the chamber and hall where our father was before he died because we are strangers. Anytime we come there, we can stay there. But we gave the very nice part of the house to Alex. So I was showing Doc where that house was. What I have spoken so far the pastor, the businessman, the engineer, the lawyer who says God has blessed you. What I have spoken to you so far is the grace that is coming on you to go to your family and do something. There are no witches and there are no wizards. Oh, if I go and do it in my hometown, they will kill me. Who told you they are killers? Go and do it. Nobody will kill you. Nobody will kill you. Apostle, there is something I believe. I believe that if human beings don't like you, but the ground likes you, the human beings cannot do anything about you. That is why God cares some people and said, you are cursed from the ground. The curse from the ground is the most dangerous curse. As for the human beings, no matter how they hate you, one day they will die and go to the ground. So the thing you should worry about is the ground, not human beings who are earthbound. All these human beings you, you see, they are on their way to the grave. Pastor Zenabu just told us one, one that went to the grave. I heard it. Every human being you see, whether they like you or not, they wish you dead, they wish you are, all of them are on their way to a grave. What should hate you and you'll be worried is the ground. And I can tell you by the grace of God, I don't know about you, but me, the ground of Upper East has accepted me. The, the ground of Bogatang has accepted me. And I can tell you, even the ground of Damalton Dong has accepted me. One day, I had a revelation. I had a revelation. And I saw people, about 50 in number, and they were arguing. They looked very old. Their skin was like clay. And the Lord told me, he said, the youngest among them is 300 years old. So I asked the Lord, what are these people? The Lord said they are refined. That means that these are the spirits of dead people. And demonic entities and familiar spirits have the form of some of these, our ancestors and people. And they linger about in the air. Huh? Today we did some bit of spiritual warfare. I saw they were arguing. 50. He got arguing. Some said we must stop him from building the Giviat at Elohim. Then some too said, no, we can't stop him because the thing is good. He must continue. Finally, that argument in the spirit, they argued and argued and argued and the argument scattered. Their tongues were divided. And the angel of the Lord told me, Spirit of God ministered to me through the angel and said, the camp of the enemy is divided in their tongue. Nobody will stop you. You will finish that work. Because
because within even their camp in the spiritual realm they cannot agree i pray over anybody who is thinking about your family your house your land where you come from may the lord god anoint you and empower you i pray over you and tomorrow night tomorrow night 5 p.m 5 p.m tomorrow prophet felix agodeka will bring you a word the spirit of caleb don't miss it don't miss it i gave him that topic for the last night because tomorrow territory possessing anointing is coming upon us our satisfaction is not about eating a plate of food our satisfaction is about taking a land possessing the land our satisfaction is taking a whole nation and putting the imprint of jesus christ our lord and savior on the land anybody that can scream the power run it over that means i am blessed and i can take care of my children and other people's children and my children's children strangers children oh why am i looking at some people's hands and the hands are lifted. And God is blessing all these hands. God. Oh, Jesus. Today I listened to the churches Pastor Fawson was mentioning. Strange places. I said, Lord, if you don't prosper us in these villages, the villages and the towns will remain where they are. He said that, Pastor Mike told me, he said, the fastest growing region in terms of our multiplication of churches is the upper west and you and i know that the upper west is one of the regions no government thinks about just like upper east the reason the reason nobody thinks about us is because you are the government of this place no 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 listen they are no wicked Jesus Christ was not wicked when he saw the man at the gate of the temple beautiful. I believe that Jesus saw that man before. The man was crippled. I believe that it is likely that Jesus ever saw that man. But he never raised the man. That cripple, Jesus never healed him. He reserved it for Peter. When he said, the works that I do, shall you do also. He reserved that cripple for Peter. So when Peter got there, he said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The government left this land for you. IMF left this land for you. Am I talking to somebody at all? Rich men left this land for you. I came to declare, you alone will change your land. You will change your nation. You will change your continent. We are more than enough. The loudest shout will precipitate a blast. My cup run it over. Over. Tonight, I want you to pray just one prayer. Father, help me to help my family. Last week, one of my greatest joy was my, when my younger sister, the one with that house, came to me and said, brother, I don't have a phone. And I said, Pastor William, bring me two phones. Pastor William came and carried them. And I paid for two phones. And they took them to the village. Your greatest joy in life is helping your family members.
Yesterday, I was talking to somebody. I, I've forgotten who the person was in my office. And the person was talking about his brothers and said that one of the brothers was in, two of them are in Holland. And then one is in London. And then one is also somewhere. I've forgotten who it was. Prophet Kofi Odru. He was talking yesterday. Yeah, he was talking. Prophet Odru was saying, I said, oh, me and my sister is in Kolpe, Alex. Alex, why is, why is Alex not standing in the building? Kurbon Zila Ayaha. Kolpe, Alex. My sister, eh, yeah. Kolpe, Alex. Kolpe, Alex. So one is in <laughs> I, my sisters. One is in Kolpialik. One is in Yakut. Um, my my stepmother is in Damalton Long. And then um my brother John, Damalton Long. Uh, <laughs> Hey, some of my relatives, Sakot. <laughs> when you are going to a house, you pass through an international bridge. They call it Narabok. Listen to me. I'm telling you, poverty in my life would have killed me early. And that's because I will see all these people suffering and I cannot help them. And the pain will kill me. The joy is if the joy is where we are standing now by the grace of God. Hunger cannot kill any of my brothers and sisters. Hunger can kill them. If Alex will permit me, if Alex will permit me, Alex is my brother. My brother was sick, went and lay in the hospital. I went and visited him in October. October, eh? Yeah. He was in the hospital. But I looked at where he was staying and I didn't like it. I told Pastor Solo, Solo, you guys look for a new house in Borga. When this Nabra man, Nabro, you remove him from the hospital, carry him and go and dump him in the new house. Because that is other house where he stayed. It's like an idol. He doesn't want to live there. Although the house is no good. Mommy and I took care of the rent. We took care of everything. As soon as they removed him from the hospital, they carried him and went and dumped him in a new house. Listen, tonight I didn't come to tell you about me. I just came to tell you, number one, that there are many people who are doing things like this. But because they haven't told you, you just look at them and you judge them wrongly. That's number one. Oh, you are clapping like you are not. You are, yeah. Number two reason I'm telling you this is because you can never be different from your father. Like father, like son. And if I'm your spiritual father, what I do is what you would do. I speak this anointing upon you. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 talks about God choosing fast. And he said, when you fast, don't hide yourself from your flesh. Don't hide yourself from your flesh. Don't hide yourself from your flesh. Isaiah 58. Don't hide yourself from your flesh. Isaiah 58. Look for don't hide yourself from your flesh. Is it not to deal bread to the hungry? That means when you are blessed, you give bread to the hungry. And I'm telling you, many of us, the regions we come from, there are too many hungry people. You cannot be poor. Deal bread to the hungry. And that you bring the poor that are cast out to your house. When you see the naked, that thou covers him. 
But look at the last part of this verse. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Last Wednesday, you guys saw me. I brought out my sisters, and my brothers. John, Emmanuel, Lisbeth. You could see my family, very simple. I was not hiding from my flesh. These are my brothers and sisters. Mama Comfort, when I went home that day, I told myself, your name is really Joseph. The way Joseph stood in front of his brothers and sisters and wept. I said, that name Joseph is what makes my, me a nice man. And the Eastwood too is the one that does the other one. You know the other one. Pew. That's the Eastwood. But when the Joseph manifest, <laughs> you have the heart of a human being. I speak on everybody's life. Stop hiding from your flesh in the name of their witches and their wizards. And you are running away from them. You will not help anybody. Some of you can't even remember the last time you went to your hometown. My cup runs over. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Come. Ernest. Give me this mic. My cup ran it over. It is pouring on the ground. My cup ran it over. It's pouring on the ground. Until your blessing hits the ground, your cup is not running over. I pray. I was going to throw this water down, but I think it will be better. use this one as your drinking glass for the next two days I pray because Pearl your prosperity your blessing oh, is going to come upon you anything you touch will be turned to gold no the other pastors international school talks are anything you are doing even me if you are not careful you touch me I'll grow taller than this I pray oh somebody right now right now L listen 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 if you hate your family and you are hiding from your flesh my meeting today will mean nothing to you Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? Tonight, I did not preach my notes. I didn't preach my notes. I came to prophesy to you that anybody who has your flesh in mind, your brothers and your sisters, your relatives, and the land you come from, your cup will run over. So if you know you hate them and you are running away from them, don't pray. Because nothing will happen for you. Somebody's listening to me online. In person. Can you imagine if God raises you? He's doing something for his family. 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 You know what the Bible said? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And the salvation is not only when you are saved and you are going to heaven. The salvation is your well-being when you prosper and you are in health as your soul prospers then you can imagine it's happening to the whole family listen to me i will be the dumbest of a human being if after the dedication of the giviat a elohim i leave any brother or sister of mine whom my father left behind or their grandchildren if I leave any of them to perish the whole of that building we've dedicated is an act of stupidity no no no
people then it is better not to build it can somebody first of all I want you to go back to your family go back to your people Joseph couldn't go back but they came looking for him and then when they came he said go and bring my father and go and bring my mother my mother is dead go and bring my father and my brother Benjamin go and bring me Benjamin oh oh listen I'm not I'm not a very gifted preacher or very anointed human being but apostle what I can tell you and I'm never shy about it is that I have a heart I have a heart it's my biggest gift it's my biggest gift may God give you the same Lift up your heart. Listen. I know some of those family members, they have hurt you. Some have offended you. Some of them, if they got their own way, they will kill you. But people, there is a reality you can never change. They are your family. They are your family. That is your blood. You can't do anything about it. How can others enjoy your blessing? Your family will not enjoy anything. Whenever I go to Giviat Ha Elohim, Giviat Ha Elohim, we make you Giviat Ha Elohim. When I go there, everybody is working. Everybody's working. When I look at my brother John and I see him doing anything, either he's moving a motor king, he's a university graduate. Either he's moving a motor king or he's helping. I, I'm trying to help him to get a job, so we, we, are, we are doing that. Okay. But in the meantime, he's at the site and he's helping. When he's moving the things, then tears will be in my eyes. I'm like, this boy has humbled himself. In spite of his education, despite the education, look at the way he's working. I can tell from all the people that are working, this one is my blood. Listen, your brothers and your sisters and your family, they are the best thing God ever gave to you. Even your spiritual brothers and sisters in the church cannot replace them that is why when we did the thing to honor our parents i told my wife i said pearl we honor our spiritual parents but we're forgotten about the biological one but when the bible said honor thy father and thy mother this is the first commandment with the promise he was not talking about only spiritual fathers primarily he was talking about spiritual father he was talking about biological father and mother can somebody tonight I beg you I beg you I beg you I beg you in the name of God I beg you go back to your family go back to your family they've offended me they done this against me nobody was offended like Joseph I beg you go back to your wife go back to your husband go back to your children go back to your father and go back to your mother go back pray you are already with them pray that you will be closer to them somebody lift up your voice and begin to pray no drums just let us pray I see I see him.
Somebody pray. With fire in his eyes, he's standing by your door. Somebody, please, I beg you, go back. Stop the arguments and go back. You are killing the most precious thing God has done. And that is a family.
Listen, now let's talk about the overflow. Overflow of food, overflow of money, overflow of clothing, overflow of shelter. We are still going to pray. Overflow of food, overflow of money, overflow of shelter. Overflow of money. One day, when my late father was alive, the driver took some food to the village. My father received the food. He said, when you go, tell him I thank him. And then my father asked the driver and said, God has blessed him. He hasn't forgotten about us. But tell him, it's not all children who think like that. Right now, you prayed for the sake of your family. May God prosper you with the overflow. I will remember when my late mother too was alive, she came with one of, I've told you this story again and again. My late mother came to me with one of my younger sisters and I think in those days they wanted some amount of money which was like 20 cities in those days I was shouting I said Abba I just sent you and I sent you and I sent you again and now you brought your daughter here am I the one who gave birth to them I started shouting my mother, my mother told me sit down I said I will sit you guys are giving me too many problems. I won't say. She said, I said, sit down. And she's never talked like that to me before. Finally, she said, Pastor, I said, Maya, Zinma, man, do I Zinma? I gave birth to you. Sit down. I don't know when I sat down. <laughs> There is some kind of math. If you don't fear it, you are cursed. Then she asked me, how much do I, am I asking for, for your sister? I told him. I told her. She said, you know, you are a pastor. I know you are not a bad man. But it's poverty that is making you shout like this. Instead of being angry at us, use your anger and go and pray. And God will bless you and you look after us without shouting. Then she said, if you don't want to help her, I'll get up with my daughter and leave this house. And you will never see us again. Then she said, you know, God knows we are poor people. And what we need, God put it in your hands so that you can help us. Must you shout like this? I don't know when I ran upstairs and brought the money. I didn't go to the bank. I brought it from where it was and I was still shouting. I even added more. I came and gave it to her. She looked at me. She said, That is you. I know. The one shouting was not you. It was somebody else. But you know, that day I learned a lesson. Your prosperity is for the family you come from. 
You can't even clap. You don't want to share. My cup runs over. So, God constantly talks about the household of David. The household of David. The household of David. Because anybody God is blessing, he's thinking about your household. Now, I want somebody to lift up your hand. If you are alone, God will bless you like you are alone. But if you think about the whole family, your brothers, your sisters, their children, oh, God will bless. Can you lift up your hand and pray, Father, bless me running over because of my brothers and my sisters, my father and my mother my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, my brother's children, my sister's children. Somebody, can you pray? Somebody pray. in this room move this move this from you anybody in this room who has more than seven brothers and sisters whether the same mother the same father stepmother stepfather but in your family you are more than seven the ones you can call your brothers and your sisters and your siblings they are more than seven seven or more when we start praying i want you to come down somebody bring me some oil may the lord sometimes it looks like a curse but it's not a curse it's not a curse may god hold them in the line until i call them i didn't know there were many like that it means your fathers were overworking <laughs> stay this one hey and they are saying i'm going to pay now because I'm your Denmark and I know it. Hey, me re visit high Africa. Apostle. Ye nyina. Igwe uzuka ho. Your owner over 30. Yehova. Mamaki. I glad is came again akara. Your father married 26 women. How many children? The children were 98. <laughs> Grandchildren are how many? They are more than the 96. Okay. I deal with you. Now because of me a 20. So that I will lay hands on them. So instead of blaming the government for the problem in Africa, we should blame our fathers who don't sleep in the night. Our fathers are all night watchmen. As for mommy, your father he tried. He, he, he's not a monk. He didn't believe in that. How many of you enjoyed the word I preached? Let me tell you, it was not a teaching, it was a prophecy that your prosperity and your overflow has started today. No, no, no. You will not know where the blessing will come from. You will not know where the blessing will come from. I pray. I thought I was going to lay hands on just about 20 people. But looking at the number, God will still move even if I wave at you. Hey. No, I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. You have moved out of your seat. It is more than enough. Lift up your hand. Abraham said, I have lifted up my hands unto the most high. That I will not receive anything from you. Lest you say I have made Abraham rich. 
Can somebody pray right now? Father, for the sake of that family, give me more than enough. Give me the overflow. Oh, Jesus, somebody pray. Who is like you in all the earth? Your presence is like heaven to me. Somebody pray. Come on, I can't hear the prayer. Please, don't, don't let them always say clap your hands and pray. You, you don't need to clap your hands all the time before you pray. Oh. Mama, I read, I read your text. May the Lord touch your life and visit your house. Jesus, where's my bottle of oil? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Somebody pray. Much less love Somebody pray. And Don't let me say clap your hands and pray. Any anointing. Somebody bring me my Nobel mic.
expensive to me than to the people and that's because this man when I pick the microphone and listen I was going to let you guys just lift up your hand put it on your head and go and sit down because I said it's too much there are too many then I'm singing and laying hands on a few people and the Lord said keep listening then he asked me something. The amount of work I'm going to do on these people. And the way my father used to labor on a farm before he gets small millet. Which one is more difficult? That one is more difficult. And then he also told me the length of time you will spend putting your hands on the head of these people. That length of time is very short compared to the many, many years these people have suffered they've been suffering for thousands of years and the hour and the day has come for something to change in your life in their life now listen to this unless you don't know the potency of what I put on you he said what I have put on you within two seconds can change somebody's life. I'll tell you something. We would never leave the regions in which we were born the way we came to meet it. Can you lift up your hand? I'm talking to a millionaire. I'm talking to a billionaire. Your cup will run over. You get money. Take it. But when we get the money, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. Receive it. Take it. Shabbat <laughs> Shabbat 
hear people say, the Bible doesn't make people prosper. <laughs> then I'm like, so what makes people prosper? I can tell you, even if the Bible teaches on holiness, holiness will let you prosper. But you don't understand. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, in his Lord as he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaves will not wither, bring forth his fruit in the season. He said, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Listen, if you stop drinking beer, you will prosper. No, no, no. Prosperity starts with repentance. If you have one wife and you don't have a girlfriend or side chick, you will prosper. Oh, but we know some people who have got them and they prosper. If they were not that stupid, they would have prospered more. There is a blessing in having one wife without adultery in your life. Adultery is full of bad luck. I pray over somebody. I heard my daughter talking about the altars today. But let me tell you, the altars have caused a lot of poverty. People whose destinies have been sacrificed to idols. But 2,000 years ago, the mega and the holy altar that God erected on Mount Moriah, the same spot where Abraham built the altar. That same spot where David built the altar at the threshing floor of Haruna. Haruna. A temple was built. The altar was on the same spot. And on this altar, the blood of the son of the living God applied on the mercy seat the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. I pronounce the victory of the blood of the atonement over the land from which you come. Every ancestral curse is broken and that blood speaks for us at the desert pastures. I declare right now in the supreme superior and that name Jesus Christ come and shout in the name of Jesus seven times in the name of Jesus 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 One of my sisters asked me a question, Daddy. Why are we like this and we are, you are, why are we like this and you are like that? The name of Jesus. I knew that name early. 20 years old. I understood the power of that name. Understood the power of that name. Understood the power of the redemption that is in the blood of Jesus. The gospel of Jesus makes you wise unto salvation. My father got born again. Pulled down his idols. When you go to a village, his house is different from other houses. Where he used to farm is different from where others used to farm. Why? The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Tonight, even those of you whose family has three members, 
two members. I pray in the name of Jesus that the blood of Jesus will speak on your behalf. Oh, our sister preached so powerfully on the altar. But I, I can tell you, the blood on that altar, in the Holy of Holies, that blood of Jesus, the blood which after 2,000 years is still speaking. Still speaking. The power of every idol, every principality, every power over our land is broken. This is Easter period. We remember on the hill far away, stood an old rugged cross. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things on earth and of things on the earth. There is none other name under heaven given among men. Whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus. I pray. Right now. Let the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus. And let the spirit of Jesus be superimposed on this region. When we start praying again, oh, this light, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I hear our uh, things are too many, <laughs> our things are too many. So, the current cannot contain us. That's the blessing of prosperity. The Bible said Abraham and Lot increased until the land could not contain them. That is what prosperity do, will do. More speakers, more sound, more fun. So can you imagine if this building was fully air conditioned and everything is central air conditioned? They should get ready. We are coming. It will not be fans. It will be air conditioned. In terms of prosperity, we've seen nothing yet. I heard a voice from heaven. Where are they? Where are they? There are five people. Where are they? And the whole of heaven was silent. And he said five. And I heard myself ask. The one that sits on the throne. Where are they? Where are they? Araba, come here. Araba is from Hamburg. Hamburg is in Germany near Togo. Hamburg is near Togo. Araba. Hey. Mommy told me a story. Don't shake. They call. In Nigeria, we say no shaking. YV, I just heard a word. The kingdom is waiting for this woman's money. There are some of you here. The kingdom is waiting for your money. And that money, no devil can stop it. Declare your prosperity. Every closed door is closed because a proper door is being opened. And any door which is not supposed to close cannot be closed. Ah. She came all the way from Hamburg, Germany. I speak on you. The blessing of God. Receive it. Take it. Ah, let it go. Ah. Where are the four? Where are the four? You sat too early. I beg you. I know you are very tired. I know you are very tired. Father, where are the four? I select them from the congregation. Jesus! 
There are four people. The dimensions of their wealth and their increase will make national and international news. Let the power of God locate them. In the name of Jesus. Come on, take it. What is happening there? Bring me that person. Hey! Jesus! Three more! Three more. If God is looking for only five to prosper, at the same, watch these people a few years. Not many years, a few years. Just watch them. A few years. Bring her to. Running over. Running over. Running over. Running over. Receive it. Running over. Somebody take it. Lift up your hand and begin to declare running over. Running over. Overflow. Hear the word overflow. Somebody say, Lord, I want to enter overflow. I want to enter overflow. I'm about to call something, it's not for everybody. I talked about seven members of the family, children. And when I said seven, the Lord said, Rest, 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 rest. rest. Is there somebody who has a moving in your heart tonight? Is there somebody who has a moving in your heart? That you can sow a seed of 7,000. Can you come to me here and do it? You are entering some financial rest. I'm talking about overflow. I'm talking about people going into a place they never knew they could be. Is anybody coming to me? Jesus. Father, take them into the overflow. The rest. The rest. The rest. The rest. How many days will I do this? I don't know. Three more people come to me. Take an envelope and sow that seed of 7,000. Do it. Somebody's watching me online. Do it. Do it. We are breaking the back of something. I pray. Every ancestral generational curse. We break the power. In the name of Jesus. The louder shout is bringing down an evil altar. I stood here. A few years ago. And I told you. Ten years from now. You will not see a single idol in front of a single house in the upper east region. If you want, when you are driving, you look for the idols. They are disappearing one by one and they are disappearing quickly. The more block houses we are seeing in the upper east region, the more the idols are disappearing. That is the word of a prophet. prophet in Accra. I am a mouthpiece of Jehovah in the Upper East region. When I stand here and speak, I know what I'm talking about. I pray the effect of any idol in your village, your town. Mama, God bless you. Makabalanda liado imusanta malie kunisi Yambakuduni miniasime akalandazia. What does it mean? The horns of the altars have been thrown down because of the power of the blood and the praise of Jehovah has gone up. That is what I just said. On that envelope, right overflow and put the 7,000. Do it. Do it. Do it. Sometimes when some of these things come to you, you say, Lord, but they've been sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing. 
And the Lord said, it doesn't matter, let them do it. I'm telling you, there's somebody who is being led to sow a seed of $7,000. Somewhere in America, Britain, Germany, wherever the person is. May the spirit of the Lord God come upon the person. May the person get up and expedite that action in the name of Jesus. Tonight, we are dealing with people going into realms they've never thought they could be. In the name of Jesus. Pearl, did you write one for me? Thank you. Here, just do one for me. I never leave myself out of some blessings. Thank you, Araba. Never leave myself out of some blessings. Somebody sow that seed of 700 Ghana cities. Somebody 700 dollars. Somebody 700 pounds. Go ahead and do it. Somebody 700 euros. Go ahead and do it. I'm calling you now. Do it. If you can't do it, don't push yourself. But there is a time you just look at a certain seed and you say, I have prepared myself for this. I am made for this hour. I am made for this time. I am made for this season. I am made for this season. Oh, glory. Ah. Somebody lift up your hand. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. We are left with just one night and one morning. So pray in the spirit. I was going to ask, who is this tall woman? Is she my family member or what? She is. Hey, come here. How are you doing? That's my, me and my big sister. This is my big sister's first one. Pray! Prophet Felix, speak this. Let me see how many people are fit. Bring me another set. Somebody that see the 70 Ghana see the 70 pounds, 70 dollars. Do it right now. Go ahead. Release it. Release it. I see. Okay. Add me. You can handle it for me. Dr. James. Somebody 70. Go ahead and do it. Some of you can multiply the 70 by 2. You can multiply it by 3. You can multiply it by 4. Anybody who took an envelope to do a seed yesterday, you took an envelope to do a seed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Prophet Kofi drew any envelope you took to do a seed, any envelope you carried to do a seed, put it on the altar. There is something I said about seven. That is why I said 70. Go ahead and do it. Some of you are following us online. Go and do it. Online, when you see that the, the, the transmission is frustrating you, break through the frustration. You see, I'm tired. And they me on and off, on and off, on and off. At the end of on, I know I know. At the end of off, I know I know on. A cycle off, now I train, now I know on. Sir, son, age way. Karen, it's good to see you in your nice dress. God bless you. Waymaker. Waymaker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. That is who you are. Anybody with a pledge, anybody with a seed anywhere, put it on the altar. Promise keeper.
like a child. He said, Pastor Isut, you've never told me these are the kind of things you do. He was crying. I said, why? He said, the story I told him from the time we turned, they said that that junction is called, um, what? Junction that you all are. Asongi Junction. I've been saying Congo Junction is not Congo. My wife told me that. The Congo. The Congo is a mistake. My wife told me. I've been telling my wife, anything which is a mistake in the house, she caused it. Anything which is bad, she caused it. Anything which is good, I caused it. You know what? I want somebody to get up and come to prophet. And someone go here. Take a seed of 70 and put it on the altar. No matter the kind of offering you've done, just come and take this envelope. And between tonight and tomorrow, take a seed of 70, another 70, and put it on the altar. Joseph told Jacob, come to Egypt. And the Bible said he went there with 70 souls. I pray May this 70 represent 70 souls. Sometimes when we call these numbers, it looks like it's nothing we are saying. May somebody step into the 70 and he called the 70 and put a spirit upon them. He sent them, he gave them power over devils and demonic forces. And he said, go! Cast out the devils. Heal the sick. In Jesus' name, somebody do it. When the season of the 70, go to him. When the envelopes are finished, they are finished. This time when it finishes, that is it. Somebody lift up your hand and pray. This is you and your household. Tomorrow night is the anointing service. Put oil on everybody. And believe God for your life. Glory be to God. Clap your hands and praise Jesus. I can't hear you. Overflow. Write on the screen for me. Overflow and underline it. Overflow and underline it. Somebody sitting down, you are carrying that seed. Seven Ghana seed is ten, five, two, one. Everybody engage the platform. Just take an offering and go. Take an offering and go and put it there. No matter what it is. I don't have seven thousand, but what I have is two, two hundred. Two, two Ghana seed is one Ghana. Fifty pesos. I'm going there anyway. I'm going there anyway. I'm going there anyway. Write overflow on the screen and underline it for me. Those of you that are watching online, don't leave yourself out of this offering. Don't leave yourself out of this. Don't leave yourself out. 
Antiochinie Yeshirao Yetontrongo Asumjehinie Yeshirao Antiochinie Yeshirao Yetontrongo Asumjehinie Yeshirao Anti wine cry, wine cry, wine cry Wine cry, not easy Why cry not easy? Oh, oh, binti say. Now let's go back, 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 back. Somebody shout and praise him.
Father, we pray your, your blessing on your people. And especially the online people. We remember them. We ask in Jesus' name. Bless every seed sown. Bless every offering given. Touch the lives of your people. Glorify your name. Move by your spirit in our lives. And grant us the overflow. In Jesus' name. Can you type overflow in the middle screen for me? Is it possible? <sighs> overflow. I want everybody to take your notebook and write overflow and underline it. If it's your phone, just type overflow and underline. Overflow, underline. Then you put point number one. What do you want? What do I want? Overflow. What do I want? Overflow. What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? Not you. What do I want? That one shouldn't be underlined. Why some of you didn't do you didn't do comprehension in English or when you do some, something you underline and you put point number one, you don't underline that one. Oh, is that not basic? I did not go school now teach our monza. And I and cry and me I know. Lower caps or sentence keys. Sentence keys or, or title keys. Not all caps. Overflow. Number one. Why is he keeping them so long? Or the computer does the way the thing operates. And, and besides, I wanted it in the middle screen. Maybe there's something wrong somewhere. What do I want? Number two, how much of it do I want? How much of it do I want? This is overflow. Number one, what do I want? Number two, how much of it do I want? How much of it do I want? What do I want? When you go home, list all. How much of it do I want? Enough for myself and all my family, my community. My region, my town, my country. How much of it do I want? When do I want it? When do I want it? I want to marry when? Hey, the people are still underlining the thing. Or maybe it's like that. Maybe, maybe that, that's the way computer does it. I don't know. When do I want it? What do I want? How much of it? Not how much do I want. How much of it do I want? So what I want? How much of it do I want? When do I want it? And then how do I want it? Huh? This was my message tonight. It's now I'm, I've reached my sermon. But I'll release you in two minutes. Don't panic. Pastor Mike, this was my message. Overflow. What do I want? How much of it do I want? Now, I know what do you want? I cannot ask you. Because some of you, there are more than 30. How much of it do you want? It will take you hours to describe it. But when I ask, when do you want it? Shout your answer. When do you want it? Now. When do you want it? Now. When do you want it? Now. I remember one day, you know, my daughter's in the house. There's one of them, she's a local woman. One day I was going down the steps. I said, You will marry this year. She said, No, no, no. Next year. 
And I'm sure you're crossing the When do you want it? How do you want it? Just know how. Say first class. Come on, shout it first class. How do you want it? How do you want it? How do you want it first class? First class. You travel in that plane first class. Psalm 23 verse 5. NLT. New Living Translation. Keep it in your spirit. Psalm 23 verse 5. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Message translation of the Bible. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. I pray May God serve you with a six course blessing. Six course feast or dinner in Jesus name. Tomorrow, ordination service is taking place in the morning here. To tell you the time. After that, we are going for baptism as the Giviat Ha Elohim. And you will have to be there with me. And then we come back here in the night for the anointing assembly. Sunday, two assemblies. The first one is 7 to 9 a.m. And the second one is 9 to 12 a.m. Sorry, p.m. The, the first one we will interpret into Frafra. I'll be preaching, but we'll interpret into Frafra. And then the second one will be um, English straight. The Lord mightily bless you. Hey, I was going to call I was going to commit haram. You know, normally when I'm going to church, I just take these envelopes and I put some money in them and I put them in my iPad. And today I had four of them. And the amount in them is the same. And, and it's good offering, no? It's good offering. It's not, it's not, uh, yeah. It's not Korokota. So where is Barakans? Come and take this money. I can't take it home. There is some money if you carry it to the church and take it back home. Hey, you'll be lying in the night and you hear some noise you don't want to hear. The Lord bless you mightily. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. What is this? Okay. I've been doing this disclaimer. I've been trying to understand it, but it doesn't work. I said this disclaimer. Won't it let somebody even stop giving us an offering? Because I don't know when you receive offering. Is it no social media? Me, I don't know. But there is one you've been hearing. Somebody normally will send you a message and says, I'm Pastor Eastwood. I have a prophecy for you. I had a dream yesterday that your grandmother had come back from the dead and then send some money to some orphanage somewhere in Nigeria, somewhere in Damaltendong. Please, I don't do that kind of thing. I don't do. Anytime I'm receiving an offering, you see my face. I'll be standing in front of you like this, talking to you. But if you are receiving a message, and it's a typed message, asking for offering, I can tell you I'm not the one. I'm not the one. And I have nothing whatsoever to do with it. And my staff too, my staff and the people that work with me, Will never send you social media message asking for an offering to do anything. The Lord bless you mightily. And um, take good care of yourself until we see you tomorrow. Make sure you have a copy of the book on satisfaction. I love you. I will see you tomorrow.